Hey everyone, how's it going? So a month ago, I decided to try Zubat in my Red and Blue solo series, and as you can see, it didn't do very well. The only Pokemon that did worse than Zubat were Pidgey and Abra, both of whom would have a much easier time in Generation 2. I don't think it's possible that I can overstate how bad Zubat is in this game. Its stats are atrocious, although maybe not as bad as you might think. Zubat ranks the 13th worst Pokemon in Generation 2, and while that's bad, what makes Zubat truly awful is its move pool. In terms of raw base power, the strongest move Zubat can learn is Steel Wing, a pitiful base 70 power, and the strongest same type move it can learn is Wing Attack, which thankfully is now 60 base power. Now, to be fair, all is not lost, almost every Pokemon can learn the move Return, and so long as your friendship is high enough, which it should be later in the game, it will be a 102 base power move, which is actually a little bit stronger than Double Edge in Generation 1, plus we don't have to worry about recoil. That said, in Generation 2, the opponents have much better teams, and are frankly just a lot smarter and harder to manipulate still possible, but not to the crazy extent we're able to in Generation 1. So this is going to be a fascinating run. And before we begin, I want to try and hit 500k subs at some point. I think that's a little unrealistic, but hey, if you could drop a sub, drop a like, maybe it'll happen. You guys seem to really like the videos. Let's try to boost it in that algorithm so many more people can watch me struggle through these games with some of the worst Pokemon imaginable. Now, I didn't even bother trying to battle Faulkner until after I went through Sprout Tower, which in this game is optional. And even though he's a better matchup than Brock, he's still a pretty terrible matchup for my Zubat. Faulkner leads with a level 7 Pidgey. I go for Supersonic and I hit, but Pidgey doesn't hit itself in confusion. I use Bite, which is a special move in this generation, 60 base power. Pidgey snaps out of confusion, hits me with Tackle again. I use Bite again, Pidgey uses Tackle again, and we're able to knock out Pidgey with 22 HP. That's probably not good enough. To have any hope against Pidgeotto, I'm going to have to hit Supersonic, but I miss. 45% chance I miss. It goes for Gust, only doing two more damage than Pidgey's Tackle, so it's not the end of the world. Unfortunately, I proceed to miss with Supersonic, not one more time, but two more times, and Pidgeotto is able to knock me out. Not an awful first attempt, but not great. I decide to try again, and my strategy last time was pretty terrible. This time I'm just going to go for Bite. Pidgey uses Tackle, but my second Bite causes a flinch. There's a 30% chance of that. So we've made it past the Pidgey with almost full HP. I'm still a little worried about Pidgeotto, so I go for Supersonic, but this time I hit. Pidgeotto is still able to use Gust. I go for Bite, and like I expected, I do next to nothing, which is why I wanted the Confusion damage. Speaking of which, we haven't seen any of that yet, another Gust hits me. I use Bite again, and a crit is pretty good, no flinch, no Confusion, we're almost done. That said, I use Bite again, Pidgeotto just survives? But so do we! On 1 HP, Faulkner does not have any potions. And so, at level 13, with only one hit point remaining, on just our second try, Zubat is able to make it past Faulkner. Not bad at all, and saying that, I also don't think Bugsy will be all that bad, because I am a Poison Flying type, and it's one of the few gym leaders I actually have a really good matchup against. Unlike in HeartGold SoulSilver, Bugsy leads with Metapod. I still don't have Wing Attack, but I do use Bite and get a flinch, Another bite, Metapod goes for Tackle, it does literally 4 HP, and we knock it out with a third bite. Next comes out Scyther, which at least won't use Fury Cutter. That said, it still has Quick Attack, and that did a ton of damage. I go for Swift and get a Clutch Crit. This time, it actually does go for Fury Cutter, a bit of an interesting move. And I go for Confuse Ray, which is 100% accurate, and replace Supersonic. Now, Scyther actually hits itself in Confusion, first time we've seen that. I use Swift, and I think we're going to knock out Scyther, especially if it hits itself in Confusion. Not bad at all, so this is going to be a victory. In fact, I'm so confident that while I knock out Kakuna with Bite, I'll tell you that the reason Zubat has Swift is that it's a TM available in the basement of Union Cave. 
usually a terrible move, but it is the same base power as Bite, and Zubat does have better attack. Kakuna and Metapod use Harden, which is why I went for Bite, and it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Nothing a Poison Sting Kakuna could do to Zubat. Bugsy was unsurprisingly a first try victory, but I don't anticipate the next couple battles being nearly as easy. The first of these is against Rival 2. He leads with Ghastly, I use Bite, and wow, it one-shots. All right, one down. The next Pokemon is the Rival Zubat. I go for Swift, and it does over half. Okay, maybe this won't be so bad, especially since it just missed a Supersonic, and we knock it out. Two down. Croconaw definitely will be tougher. I go for Swift, it does next to nothing. Water Gun's doing decent damage. I'm gonna go for Swift again. It goes for Water Gun again. I don't think I'm gonna win this. I'll use Swift again, and okay, well, now I will. It just went for Rage for some reason. I don't think this will knock it out. It doesn't, but there's another Rage. Okay. Well, if the rival just went for Water Gun, we would have lost, but... Thankfully, in the early game, the AI still is kind of random, and we can use that to our advantage for a first try victory. That's definitely surprising, but I would be shocked, no, astonished, if we got a first try victory against Whitney with her mill tank that knows rollout, a move that is good in its own right, but super effective against Zubat. Thankfully, there are a lot of trainers around Goldenrod I can battle, but before I battle all of them, I just want to get a quick sense of what the Whitney battle could look like. She leads with Clefairy. I decide to go for Bite to try and get that flinch. It doesn't work. Double Slap takes away 10 of my HP right off the bat. I then go for Swift and get a crit, but she goes for Metronome and gets... Oh my god, Thunder Wave? Really? Another Double Slap takes me to about half health, but... Miltank is now obviously going to outspeed. I was curious whether it would before, and I think one shot with rollout. All right, let's see if it does. Never mind, it goes for stomp, and it's still one shots. Okay. Yeah, this is about how I thought this would go. All right, one more time, we're going to go battle Whitney just to see if we outspeed. I don't really care what Clefairy does. Thrash was horrible. Thankfully, it hits itself in confusion, and Mimic is fine. We're going to knock out Clefairy. Does Miltank outspeed me? It does. And it's still one shot with Stomp. So we're going to have to battle a lot more trainers before we even have a chance of defeating Whitney. So I did just that, spent about 10 minutes battling all the trainers I could, and now I'm 5 levels higher at level 27. I start by using Confuse Ray. Clefairy still uses Metronome, and that's funny, Wing Attack, which you'll notice I also have now. As it is a physical move and same type, it does way more than I was previously with Bite. Clefairy hits itself in confusion. Losing 9 HP is excellent, but will it really matter if Miltank just obliterates me in one hit? Hopefully I outspeed. I don't. It goes for Stompin'. Okay, that's decent. I go for Confuse Way. We're gonna need some confusion luck. Alright, Miltank hits itself in confusion, but it does like nothing. It's very defensive. I go for Wing Attack. It actually does way better damage than I thought it would. Miltank is still confused. Oh no, it goes for Attract, and now I can't attack. All right, we're going to lose this one. Miltank is still confused. Oh, it hits itself in confusion, and I actually hit. Are we going to win? Miltank is still confused. I think this is the last turn. Ah, it goes for Milk Drink. Even though Whitney doesn't have potions, Miltank has its own potion, but we hit with Wing Attack. One more, and I think we still win. Unfortunately, Miltank is confused no more. It goes for Milk Drink again. I'm able to hit, but now it's going to be at least two more to knock out Miltank. And now, finally, we see Rollout. We do survive. I'm able to hit with Confuse Ray. Wow, Attract is not playing a factor in this battle. And we're going to need some more of that luck if we're going to have any chance of winning. Miltank is still confused. And, all right, well, the luck was going to run out sometime. This is a winnable battle but we cannot be hit by Attract. All right, let's try again. This time around, I'm just gonna go for Wing Attack. Unfortunately, it goes for Double Slap, and we're not gonna have nearly as much HP, but all right, 15 HP lost. We can work with that. All right, Miltank goes for Rollout right away. <laughs> Critical hit. All right, we're gonna confuse it, but I have a good feeling this isn't gonna be the victory. Miltank needs to hit itself in confusion. It does. All right, one turn we survive. 
Maybe two for two? Let's go. Oh my God. If it hits its oven confusion one more time, we win. Come on, 12% chance. Yes. Three consecutive times it hit itself in confusion. Not exactly the ideal strategy I want to use going forward, but only four battles to beat Whitney. Not bad at all. Only two at my current level. I'm going to be honest. Dubat's not just exceeding my expectations. It's actually doing relatively decently. I've only been doing this for about 45 minutes of real time which hilariously is longer than it takes me to do a Mewtwo run at the four times speed. Kind of hilarious how fast Red and Blue and Mewtwo are when you combine them. But for Gold and Silver for Zubat, this is crazy fast. And I actually think the next gym leader might be kind of a cakewalk. I don't know if there's that much Morty can really do to Zubat. But before we can talk about Morty, the rival battle in Ecritique is mandatory this time around, and it is a little bit more tough. He leads with Haunter, which immediately goes for Curse, and that's bad. A quarter of my max HP will be subtracted at the end of every turn. This is not something we want Morty's Pokemon to do, so we're going to need to level up, but we knock it out. The Pokemon I'm most worried about is Magnemite, since it double resists Wing Attack and it resists Bite and Swift. I do have Return, although I'm not at max Friendship, and it does okay damage. However, after the curse and Thundershock take away some HP, I'm left with just over one third of my total. And yeah, I can tell you right now, I'm not going to win. All right, let's hope Haunter doesn't use curse here. So we get, no, still curse. I wonder if it'll always go for curse. And because it's outspeeding me, there's very little I can do. I can go for Confuse Ray against Magnemite. And even if it hits itself in confusion, Curse is just taking away too much HP. We've gotten ideal luck, and we still didn't make it past the Magnemite. All is not lost, however. There are tons of trainers for me to battle, including the Kimono Sisters. You actually need to defeat them in order to get the HM for Surf. And there also are trainers leading to Olivine City. And there are trainers in the Lighthouse, for that matter. For that reason, it's pretty hard to get stuck at this point in the game. There are just so many options and ways to gain experience points fairly quickly. In 10 minutes, I've defeated all the trainers I just mentioned, and I'm going to battle Rival 3 again. This time, I outspeed Haunter and one-shot with Wing Attack. I'm not even at full HP, but we can't celebrate yet. Magnemite is still going to be very difficult. I go for Return. It goes for Supersonic and hits. I'm doing about half HP, which is good. And as long as I don't hit myself in confusion, critical, it didn't matter. We knock out Magnemite. I think we're good. Next comes out the rival Zubat. I go for wing attack, hit myself in confusion. Zubat attacks doesn't do very much. Thankfully, we're able to knock it out the next turn and we're at 51 HP for Krokona. I snap out of confusion, go for wing attack. Krokona does nothing. There we go. In case you're wondering why I'm using Wing Attack over Return, Zubat is still not at maximum friendship, and so a base 60 power move times 1.5 since it's same type is 90 base power. I do think it is more powerful than Return is at the moment, but I know people will ask if I don't mention it, so that's why I use Wing Attack. For the next battle against Morty, you don't have to worry, since only Wing Attack actually can affect his Pokemon. I do need to outspeed and hopefully one-shot, Let's see if that happens. He leads with Ghastly. I go for Wing Attack. One down. I don't know if I will one-shot Haunter. Actually, we did one-shot the rivals, so yeah, we will one-shot. All right, worried about nothing. Two down. But Gengar is a Gengar. It's level 25. This one I don't think I will. All right, I wait. It goes for Hypnosis and misses. It outsped me. And I don't one-shot. Uh-oh. All right, please miss. No! Why, Agatha? Why? <laughs> I thought I was playing gold and silver. Oh, at least I can attack the turn I wake up, but it does have Dream Eater. I somehow survive, which is pretty good, but Gengar is now back to full HP. And yeah, we're going to lose this battle. Thankfully, there's actually a really easy way to make sure that doesn't happen. First things first, let's use Wing Attack on Ghastly, knock it out. We level up. Don't need mean look, so let's just go on. We're going to use Wing Attack against Haunter. Now against Gengar, it uses mean look. Whatever, my strategy will still matter next 
turn. <laughs> oh my god. Critical hit. All right. Well, I guess I'll have to tell you what the strategy was. Right near Moo Moo Farm, you can get a mint berry, and the mint berry will wake you up from sleeping. It's basically the Gen 2 version of the Chesto berry. Since we weren't out speeding, we still would need, I don't know, around 40%, but more because we can wake up. Regardless, it still would have been about a 50 50 chance of us winning, but I'm fine with that. Morty was actually a little bit more difficult. While Crobat might be one of the fastest Pokemon in the game, Zubat just isn't quite as good. But that's alright, we have half the Johto Gym Badges, and I do anticipate the 5th Gym Badge being fairly easy. It's going to be Chuck in Cyanwood City. He is a fighting type gym leader with only 2 Pokemon. Let's see if I'm right. He leads with Primeape, we outspeed, we one shot with Wing Attack, alright, I think we're good. Polyreth isn't that fast, so we're gonna outspeed. Over half is fine. Surf, you know what, that's pretty decent damage, but it's not going to matter. Since we did over half, even if Chuck had Hyper Potions or something, we would win at this point. That was a very easy first try victory, and that is the last gym battle I think I can say that for. Because the next two gyms we have to choose between are the Ice type gym, and I am weak to ice, and the Steel type gym, and I don't do very much damage at all to Steel Pokemon. So yikes. However, before we battle them, I have to do the whole Team Rocket side quest. There are a ton of trainers I need to defeat, so I am going to level up a lot before I battle either Price or Jasmine. I don't think it should be too surprising, even though he's the 7th gym leader, I've decided to battle Price. He doesn't really have that many good ice moves, and at least my attacks will do a bunch of damage. Let's see how this goes. He leads with Seal. By this point, Return is doing more damage. I go for it. I don't get the knockout. It goes for Icy Wind. Doesn't do much damage. Seal isn't Ice type, but it lowers my speed. I'm still able to outspeed Seal and knock it out with Wing Attack, but I have a bad feeling. Dugong is significantly faster than Seal. It outspeeds. I was worried, and oh, okay. You know what? It sucks I lost, but a critical hit, if that wasn't a critical hit, we would be in deep trouble. But you know what? Just to make sure I'm not wasting my time here, let's just try to battle Jasmine, see how that goes. Against Magnemite, I need to use Return, and it doesn't even do half. It goes for Thunder Wave. It then goes for Thunderbolt, and yeah, I think you can see why I chose to battle Price first. Unfortunately, at this point in the game, there actually aren't that many trainers remaining. There are some swimmers around the World Islands, and we're not that far off from knocking out Seal in one hit, which would be super useful. That's going to help against Price, but I still don't know how the heck I'm going to defeat Jasmine. And having said that, let's just see how the battle goes now that I'm a few levels higher. Will we do half damage to Magnemite? I'm going to go for a turn. Okay, we do. That's good, and we survived Thunderbolt. So, we can knock out the Magnemite. I can equip a Paralysis Cure Berry, so that's not necessarily a problem. And in Generation 1 and 2, there is a 1 in 4 chance status moves used by the opponent will fail. So I think that's what we're going to need to beat Jasmine, or at least make it to Steelix. Alright, so we've got the Paralysis Cure Berry, I go for a turn, crit would have been nice. It does hit with Thunder Wave, we knock out Magnemite number 1. Next Magnemite, again no crit, no miss with Thunder Wave. Oh, it used Supersonic, I wish it would have missed. At least we were able to knock out Magnemite, and now I want to see how much damage I'm doing to Steelix, or even more importantly, how much damage Steelix does to me. It immediately goes for Iron Tail, and actually, thankfully it hits. It's doing over half. At least I know that now. I use Confuse Ray, because we're gonna need Confusion stats if we hope to win. I want to see just how little Return will do, but Steelix hits again. This is not going to be easy. Before I head back to Mahogany, I want to try one more thing here. I'm going to try to use Confuse Ray against Magnemite, and it does hit itself in Confusion. I'm going to use Return. If it hits itself in Confusion again like it just did, I won't be paralyzed against Steelix and will be able to outspeed, which should help tremendously. There's no need to be risky or save my Paralysis Cure Berry. I'm going to go for Return. It goes for Thunder Wave as it always does. I guess we can manipulate the AI in Generation 2. We've made it to Steelix, full health, not paralyzed. Now, like I said, we're obviously going to need to use Confuse Ray and get pretty good luck. 
On turn one, Steelix hits me. So it's the 50-50 chance, and then the 75% chance. Ah, uh, that's really annoying. I go for bite, hoping for a flinch. I don't get it, but Steelix hits itself in confusion. I go for return, it seems to be doing more damage, and Steelix hits itself in confusion. That said, confusion is gonna wear off, so I go for bite, I get the flinch. I go for bite again, no flinch, hits itself in confusion a third time. All right, let's keep going. Another bite, another flinch, another bite, another flinch, but there's the hyper potion. And to be fair, I know Jasmine has a hyper potion. Still, we got some really good luck. Let's be happy about that. All right, another bite, another flinch. Holy mackerel. Another flinch, no iron tail hits, darn. I mean, that was like tool assisted level luck. And in case you're thinking I cheated, this was actually streamed live on my Twitch channel. I don't play Pokemon often on Twitch, but this is one of the rare times I did and I streamed this. So there are tons of witnesses to say that this was 100% legitimate. And truth is a far more effective way to make this part easier if you were to resort to cheating. And speaking of cheating, why didn't Magnemite just use Thunder Wave? I guess it can go for Thunderbolt. All right, let's try that again. But getting back to what I was just saying, a better quote unquote strategy would be to try and get a Zubat with a favorable hidden power. Probably hidden power ground for Magnemite, but hidden power fire would probably do more damage since it's a special attack. Unfortunately, I believe I have hidden power ghost, which is totally useless since I already have bite, which is super effective against the same types that ghost is, ghost and psychic. Anyway, speaking of useless, the Magnemites were useless this time, so we made it back to Steelix. But unfortunately, pretty much the exact same thing happens. I get insane luck once again. Three consecutive hits in confusion and a flinch. However, Jasmine has that Hyper Potion, essentially because she used it at half HP, giving the Steelix 1.5 HP. But it goes for Screech. And then all it needs to do is hit with a single Iron Tail and I lose. This is the same reason I can't use something like Swagger. I tried that, but all Steelix needs to do is hit with a single Iron Tail and the battle is over. It's very clear if we're going to beat Jasmine, we're going to need to level up. And I did forget about a bunch of trainers in the basement of Union Cave that you can only access once you surf. So I will be able to level up a little bit more. But speaking of things I forgot, I forgot I was just kind of trying to test strategy against Jasmine. I can still try and battle Price here, and he should be significantly easier. With my increase in level, does return one-shot seal? It does, so we've made it to Dugong without the speed drop. Don't forget, last time it got a critical hit too, so I hit, I do over half. Aurora Beam still does a ton, but I'm able to knock it out, two down. Now, Pyloswine will one-shot with Blizzard, but there's a 30% chance it misses. I go for return. I do half, so if it misses, I win. It hits. All right, but we can see how I'm going to win here. Honestly, with Zubat, 30% odds, not the worst thing in the world. Heck, I'll even take 10% odds sometimes if the run is hard enough. All right, here's Seal. There goes Seal, one down. We're going to use return. It's going to go for Aurora Beam. Oh yeah, it could drop my attack. That would be bad. And we can knock out Dugong. Critical hit would be the other opportunity. We don't get it. Blizzard misses. Second try at this level victory. Not bad. But have we gained enough levels to make Jasmine significantly different than she was before? I don't know. There are a couple trainers I forgot about near Lake of Rage, so we can level up maybe one more time. And it's at this point, I think I have to resort to something I didn't want to. I'm going to have to use my rare candies. I only have four right now, and I really would like to save these for later in the run. If this is how difficult Jasmine is, think how much more difficult Lance or Red is going to be. That said, we weren't even close to defeating her. So it seems like now's as good a time as any. Let's see how the battle looks at level 53. So we're going to go for return and we do way more damage. Nearly one-shotting Magnemite. If we did, that would actually be pretty good. Thankfully, it misses with Thunder Wave. 
It is unfortunate that Jasmine will not use her Hyper Potion on her Magnemite, because we did put the Magnemite in range of healing. That would make the battle a lot easier. Instead, we have to use pretty much the same strategy, although this time both Magnemite miss with Thunder Wave. And the moment of truth, how do we do against Steelix? So we go for Confuse Ray, and it does it with Iron Tail, but this is a good sign. Iron Tail is now going to be a 3-hit KO, and that might be the difference between victory and defeat. I go for Bite, get a critical hit, no flinch, but it hits itself in Confusion. I use Bite, it's Confused no more. Iron Tail hits, but I survive. And this is the big difference. Now I can use another Confuse Ray, and who knows, maybe this battle will be a victory. Look at that, I use it, Steelix hits itself in Confusion. There's the Hyper Potion, we all knew it was coming, I go for Bite. I go for Bite again, and Zubat is knocked out. Definitely not as good a luck as we've had in previous battles. If we can get luck like that with the extra hit of Iron Tail, I think we can win without having to go and find the additional rare candies. All right, let's try again. Magnemite leads. We're going to go for return. Crit, that's good. So now we're guaranteed to make it past without being paralyzed. We can recover using a Paralysis Berry. Now we just need some good luck. I go for Confuse Ray. It hits itself in Confusion. I go for Bite, get a critical hit. Snaps out of Confusion, no flinch. Hit with Iron Tail. That's not what I'd call good luck. Thankfully, I'm not getting defense drops, by the way. I hit with Confuse Ray again. It hits itself in Confusion a second time. I go for Bite, it flinches. Now, it might use Hyper Potion, but it might not, so I'm gonna use Bite again. So, she does seem to use Hyper Potion at 50%. I'm just not sure how consistent that is, and I don't want to use Return and risk not getting a flinch. And look at that, Bite rewarded me with a crit. So let's go use it again. No flinch, no hitting confusion, but a miss. We haven't seen much of that. All right, another Bite, a flinch. All right, no flinch, snapped out of confusion. Iron Tail hits, but remember, we got that one extra hit and we're gonna need it. I don't actually care that my defense fell because it doesn't matter anymore. I'm gonna go for Confuse Ray. It hits itself in confusion and that's a little bit more damage. I'm gonna go for Bite, it flinches, I think I win, I think I just won. I don't know, maybe I should go for Return, I'm just gonna go for Bite, yes! Wow, this was extremely difficult. I knew it would be tough, I was hoping Hidden Power would help me out, it didn't. I needed Confusion, didn't have to rely on something like Double Team, thankfully. What can I say, this was a terrible, terrible matchup for Zubat. And all things considered, the fact it only took me about 20 minutes to defeat the Steel-type Gym Leader, I will take that. And we do have a very easy section coming up. I'm going to skip over all of it. I'm even going to skip over Rival 4. I mean, I guess I can quickly show you the battle, but it's not too interesting. I go for Wing Attack. It doesn't one-shot Golbat. Two shots, though. Magnemite Return will one-shot. We're so over-leveled at this point. Haunter, Wing Attack will one-shot. Sneasel, Wing Attack will one-shot. And for Alligator, we're going to go for Return. We're not going to one-shot. Water Gun does nothing. So, like I said, not a battle we actually have to worry about. Let's talk about one we might actually have to worry about. Claire. She leads with Dragonair. I'm just going to go for Return. We one-shot. Okay, this might actually be easy. Another one-shot with Return. Another one-shot with Return. Now, all we need to worry about is Kingdra. I outspeed. Go for return. It does half. Oh my god, smokescreen's actually kind of bad. Of course we miss. Surf's doing okay, but not actually that great. And it doesn't matter. We hit. That was way easier than I thought. But let's face it. We had to level up so much to defeat Jasmine. Plus, there's the Team Rocket section. It's no surprise that we were just way too overleveled for Claire. And that is the 8th Gym Badge of Johto. We now have to head over to Kanto. We're going to battle the 5th rival. He's not rival Fievel. That's only in red and blue. The Elite Four. And hopefully they won't be too bad. But typically, they're pretty difficult for a Pokemon as weak as Zubat. First things first, we need to battle rival 5. The final rival in this game. I don't think he should be too bad. But never can be too overconfident. He leads with Sneasel, we're going to go for Return and knock it out one down. 
Next is Magneton. We're going to go for Return. Uh-oh. It goes for Thunder Wave. Now it outspeeds. Thankfully, just goes for Thunder Shock. And even more thankfully, we get a crit and knock it out. But that's really bad. Kadabra goes for Future Sight. That's pretty good. Since my attack is better than my special, Hidden Power Ghost actually is a little bit better than Bite. And we're going to use it to knock out Kadabra. Next comes out Golbat. It goes for Confuse Ray. I hit myself in Confusion. It goes for Wing Attack. Thankfully, I hit with Return. And yeah, I'm going to lose. I get hit by Future Sight. Haunter's going to outspeed. It goes for Shadow Ball. I actually survive, but I hit myself in Confusion. So we have to try again. All right, so Sneasel is still going to be very easy. We're going to use Return. We're going to knock it out. We have the Paralysis Cure Berry equipped. We're going to go for Return. And Magneton misses. Pretty good. And this could be a 3 -a KO. It's actually not. We got a favorable roll. Not bad. I'm pretty confident we just win now. We're going to outspeed one shot Kadabra with Hidden Power Ghost. We're going to outspeed one shot Golbat with... Oh, we don't. Never mind. Golbat's going to hit us with Wing Attack. Thankfully not Confuse Ray. And we'll knock it out in two hits. Haunter, we could just use Wing Attack and knock it out. And that just leaves for Alligator. Return's probably going to do just over half. I'm going to use it. Critical hit works. So it did take me a couple attempts. We are massively overleveled. Honestly, after not one-shotting Golbat, I'm more nervous than anything. But we pretty much defeated all the trainers we possibly can. Now it's just a matter of trying to defeat the Elite Four. Alright, well Will is kind of scary because he is a Psychic type trainer. And his moves will one-shot Zubat even at my higher level. I was curious whether Return or Hidden Power Ghost did more damage. I go for Hidden Power Ghost. It does not one-shot Zatu, but thankfully, neither does Psychic. That said, I'm sure Return would have one-shot, so let's just try that again. Alright, so this time I'm going to go for Return. Uh-oh, it doesn't knock out Zatu in one hit. There's no point even trying to defeat Will, because that means it won't knock out the second Zatu in one hit, and one more Psychic is going to knock me out for sure. Nonetheless, the best strategy is just to keep battling Will, but my goal isn't necessarily to win. I have the Spell Tag equipped, which is why Hidden Power is doing more damage, but my goal is just to gain as much experience as possible and to level up. You can see that we do one-shot Jinx, but that's the only Pokemon we currently one-shot. And we're just going to need to battle again and again and again. While doing this, be careful not to reset, but we do learn something interesting. Hidden Power does have the chance to one-shot Zatu. And if it does, we already know we one-shot Jinx. And Slowbro, it's going to be a 3 KO, but it goes for Amnesia and then Curse. So we've made it through, we've leveled up, and that means we actually might win. Zatu will use Psychic. And even after the Max Potion, we will knock it out with Hidden Power. You can see we're close to knocking out the second Zatu. And Executor probably should have gone for Wing Attack, but it didn't really matter. We did gain useful experience points there. And as we level up more, Will just becomes more and more consistent. At level 65, the first Zatu was a critical hit, but it can be knocked out in one hit, as we can see. Jinx is a 1-hit KO. We're hoping Slowbro will be a 2-hit KO. It looks to be, which is very good. Now we need to be able to one-shot the second Zatu. We're not quite there yet. Confuse Ray's pretty good, as long as we don't hit ourselves in confusion, but we do. So we're going to not make it past the second Zatu yet. And it's important to remember not to reset. I'm just so used to it. Funny enough, though, even at level 65, it is still possible to win. As long as Hidden Power one-shots the first Zatu, which it does here, it's obviously going to one-shot Jinx, so that's pretty good. Slowbro, it's going to two-shot pretty consistently, and for whatever reason, it uses Amnesia instead of just attacking me. We really need to one-shot the second Zatu, and you can see it's at least possible. I go for Wing Attack, and unlike Hidden Power Ghost, it does way more damage, and it one-shots. And this is pretty good. We have a long way to go, and as we continue to level up, Will will get easier and easier. But it's nice we were able to get past him at only, quote-unquote, level 65. Koga, I think, will be kind of interesting because I am poison type and the most annoying thing Koga can do is use Toxic. Without the ability to use Toxic, probably the scariest Pokemon is the Fortress. Explosion will do a ton of damage. I gotta watch out. Let's see how it goes. 
He leads with Ariados, I go for Wing Attack, and it's a one-shot, no surprise. That's one Pokemon down. Venomoth is also Bug-type, unsurprisingly we get the exact same result. Even though Venomoth is a bit more powerful, it doesn't really matter. Now out comes Fortress. I go for Wing Attack, it's doing under half, it goes for Spikes, in a solo run that's irrelevant. I use a second wing attack, it anticipates and goes for explosion, and we're not able to tank that. I didn't think we would be. I was worried about Fortress, but with a little more leveling up, we should be able to do about half HP, and Fortress shouldn't use explosion because it would still have too much HP to think it has to. Having said all this, it's not as if Will has become super easy. We got very favorable ranges, and that was the only reason we were able to defeat him that time, as well as this time you're about to see. The fact of the matter is, both Zatu can survive a hidden power. And since it is over 50 base power, it is more powerful than Return. You can see in this battle, the second Zatu lives on just a sliver of health and gets off Confuse Ray, which I guess is better than Psychic. However, it goes for Max Potion, and if we were to hit ourselves in Confusion twice, we would lose. Thankfully, we get a high roll on our second hidden power, and we are able to defeat Will, I accidentally misclick and I meant to use wing attack, so that was pretty good. But that's a perfect illustration why I wasn't too excited I defeated Will the first time. I knew defeating him at my current level was still going to require quite a bit of luck. Preparing against Koga, I think about using the move Detect. I don't know how much more of Confuse Ray I'm going to use. As we get later and later into the game, there's pretty much going to be two outcomes. Either I'm going to be pretty much one-shot by the Pokemon, or I will pretty much one-shot the Pokemon myself. Confuse Ray doesn't help as much as it did early game. I can reset if this is a bad idea, and this is why you don't see me saving before I battle Koga. It could still be a very tough battle, but I don't know if deleting Confuse Ray is the right strategy. Don't forget, in Generation 2, there's no way to regain moves you overwrite. Anyway, onto the Koga battle. We're gonna one-shot Ariados with Wing Attack, we're going to one-shot Venomoth with Wing Attack, but now out comes the Fortress. We're going to use Wing Attack. It's still not doing half. It goes for Spikes, and this time, I decide to use Detect because it used Explosion here. However, it seemed to know I was going to do that because it doesn't use Explosion. I decide to just go for Wing Attack, and once again, it goes for Swift. I'm not sure if this is because the AI knows I have Detect, but either way, we're able to make it past the Fortress. Muck will almost definitely not be a one-shot. I'm just going to go for a return. <laughs> I stand corrected. We got a critical hit. So it was a one-shot, but it shouldn't have been. One Pokemon remaining. Kind of fittingly, that Pokemon is Crobat, the final form of Zubat. And whoa, it outspeeds and goes for double team. Not a big deal because it can't use Toxic. Although if I keep missing with return, it will be. It goes for wing attack. Not a big deal. What is a big deal is I miss again with return. Another wing attack and it's starting to chip away my HP. Thankfully we hit, and once again we crit. Very lucky against Koga, but it's good to see we can beat him at only level 67. Just like with Will, there's not too much to celebrate because this isn't super consistent, and the last three trainers are probably going to be extremely difficult. And yes, that even includes Bruno coming up next, because A, Bruno is a much better trainer here, and B, it is a terrible matchup against both Onyx and even Machamp to a degree. Once again, I'm not going to save just in case I want Confuse Ray. By the way, I do have Swagger and it is rebuyable, so that is always a good backup option. But we're getting way ahead of ourselves. Let's just see how Bruno goes. Now, Hitmontop has Detect. It uses it, but that's not a big deal. The only move it can really do damage is Quick Attack, it does like nothing, and Wing Attack, one shots, one down. Now out comes Onyx. Now I'm sure someone will ask, why don't I just teach Steel Wing? You can't get Steel Wing at this point in the game. It's available in Rock Tunnel, and we don't have access to Kanto yet, at least not that part of Kanto. So I'm stuck with Hidden Power Ghost, which is doing like a quarter. It goes for Sandstorm, which is way better in this generation, it's going to take away 1 8th of my total health as opposed to 1 16th. I'm curious to see how much return does, and overall, the two hits do more than half of Onyx's HP. But this is what I was worried about, Rock Slide. Thankfully, as we saw in the last video, Onyx has terrible attack, but it still did pretty decent damage. Especially as the Sandstorm damage starts to rack up, I'm going to go for Hidden Power. As I expected, it does not knock out Onyx, 
and after being hit by rock slide sandstorm is going to knock me out if you can believe it on my very next attempt i make it right back to bruno and this time i use a slightly different strategy at least against onyx hit on top is the same thing so this time i have detect and confuse ray i go for confuse ray unfortunately onyx is able to get off sandstorm that's not great as we saw, Return was doing just about as much damage as Hidden Power Ghost, so I'm just going to use that. Unfortunately, Onyx again doesn't hit itself in Confusion. And again, pretty much right away, I'm at a third HP. I use Return, it's going to be a 4 KO. Thankfully, Onyx hits itself in Confusion. But that Sandstorm damage, it's a problem. I use Return again, Onyx has a little bit of health remaining. And it hits itself in Confusion. It doesn't knock itself out, but we will be able to do that with Return. And now we have to hope we sweep through the rest of Bruno's team. I believe Hitmonchan has Mock Punch, but it's double resisted by Zubat. Doesn't use it, I knock it out one shot with Wing Attack. And here's the Pokemon I'm most worried about, Machamp does have Rock Slide as well. We need to one shot if we have any hope of beating Bruno. We do, I'm actually pretty surprised. Go Zubat, that's awesome. And Hitmonlee should not be able to do anything to me. We outspeed, its defense is worse than Hitmonchan, and relatively speaking, in no time at all, we find ourselves battling the final member of the Elite Four before the champion. Now, Karen is no joke, and if you don't knock out Umbreon quickly, it can use Sand Attack and really ruin your day. I decide to delete Detect and Teach Rest just in case. Don't worry, both Hidden Power and Protect, which is the same, are both available in the Mart in Kanto in case I need them, and Rest might help me out. Let's see. So she leads off with the Umbreon I'm very worried about. I go for return and wow, it's doing a lot of damage. Okay, critical hit. I expected it to be a critical hit. Unfortunately, it's still not a one shot. And there it is, Confuse Ray, I warned you. Now, I think Karen can heal. I'm gonna go for wing attack. She didn't heal and I knock it out. Wow, that's incredible. All right, things are looking okay. Not great though, because I am confused. Next, she sends out Gengar. Now, Hidden Power Ghost would have been good here, but hopefully Wing Attack one-shots. I hit myself in confusion. There's Curse. I was very worried about this. Well, so long as we snap out of confusion, we'll definitely knock out Gengar, but I think Curse might be too much. Having said that, if you notice, Curse didn't affect me this turn because I just knocked out a Pokemon. Murkrow is pretty weak. We're going to knock it out. So it's only if we can't one-shot a Pokemon that we need to worry about Curse. I just don't think we're going to one-shot Houndoom. I go for Return, and as I expected, we don't one-shot. Now Curse activates. It uses Flamethrower, and I don't lose. I, I won. Wait, no, I didn't. She's going to, yeah, she's going to heal. And so, even though I do a lot of damage, it's not going to matter because Curse activates, and yeah. So, even in Generation 2, where Curse isn't as good as Gen 3, still a pretty effective move. Well, in my next attempt, I lost to Bruno, but in the attempt right after, I make it back to Karen, which is pretty good, and I've been keeping all the levels, so I still have rest. There were lots of ways this battle was winnable, so I'm actually pretty optimistic here. I'm going to start by using Return, and that's one way we could win. Faint Attack. Even though we didn't get the crit, it's still going to be a two-shot, and I'm not confused, meaning I should one-shot Gengar with Wing Attack. And if I do, it won't be able to use Curse. Alright, come on, Zubat. I believe in you. We hit... No. And there's Curse. All is not lost. If we can one-shot Houndoom, it works just as well. But I don't think we're going to be able to do that. You might notice, by the way, I have very few power points for Return. There are not many PowerPoint restoring items in Johto, so I need to be very careful when I use them. I'm still in hope I win mode, but take experience points if I lose. And it seems to be doing well. We've made it back to Houndoom. All right, we need a one shot here. We go for return. We don't get the one shot. Again, it's going to go for flamethrower and I'm below one quarter HP. And so we're going to lose next turn. The only way we don't is if we get a critical hit. Come on, Zubats! Darn. It's not the end of the world. It's still not consistent, and trust me, 
Lance is gonna be plenty difficult. I'm not too concerned gaining too many levels here. We're starting to make it to Karen nearly every single time, which is exactly what we want, and eventually we should win, right? Umbreon is a huge wild card. We go for return, it goes for Confuse Ray. We don't want that. We don't hit ourselves in confusion here, but it's the Gengar I'm very worried about. At level 73, do we one-shot this Gengar? Still no. It might be possible, but it's definitely not consistent, and it always seems to go for Curse. Alright, well Murkrow's typically no problem, unless we hit ourselves in confusion, there's Curse, there's Feint Attack, and oh my goodness, we're below half health. Let's see if Rest works. We snap out of confusion. I don't have the Mint Berry equipped. Will this counteract Curse? Or I think we're going to lose before we wake up. And yeah, it's looking that way. Yeah, Rest is not the play. Unless we want to use a Mint Berry, that strategy is just a tragedy. All right, we're 0 for 3 against Karen. Can we finally get some decent luck? We're going to go for Return, and this time it uses Sand Attack. That's the worst! Alright, well we knock out Umbreon, but we miss with Wing Attack, and this time Gengar decides to go for Lick, and I'm paralyzed. Alright, maybe Rest will help here. At least I'm not confused, and it will heal the paralysis. But now we can't attack for a couple turns. Gengar goes for Spite, which is fine, but eventually it's gonna go for Curse, and I expected that. That said, the timing was pretty good, and we've made it past the Gengar in a very similar situation to other runs. With the big exception being that sand attack, which, oh yeah, we just missed. Alright, that's awesome. Theoretically, we could still win with a crit, but hey, 0 for 2? That works perfectly good. Man, we are 0 for 4 against Karen. It's now gone to a point where not making it to Karen is surprising, which is really good. Can we actually defeat her? Umbreon goes for Sand Attack, so that's not looking good, but at least we're not confused. One down. We go for Wing Attack, and Gengar goes for Curse. So, yeah, we need a crit against Houndoom, I guess. We knock out Murkrow, and... We one-shot Houndoom. Now, even if we miss, Vileplume can't do that much to me. The second Wing Attack hits, and for the first time, we've made it to Lance. We're not that close to level 100. I will be very happy if we could clutch it out here. It's going to be tough. Three Dragonite, an Aerodactyl, even Gyarados. Heck, I'll throw in Charizard. They're all difficult. I'm a Zubat. But there's really not much more I can do other than just try. And if I lose, try to see why I did and how to improve it. Lance leads with Gyarados, which thankfully doesn't have Intimidate yet. I use Return, and whoa, it does a lot of damage! And Gyarados goes for Rain Dance. Okay, I can work with that. One of the Dragonites does know Thunder, so that will be a bit of a problem, but for now, we've knocked out one Pokemon. If I had to guess, this was probably the Dragonite that knows Thunder. I'm just gonna go for Return, and it does decent damage, and there's Thunder Wave. Misread that initially, but that's still bad. Now Lance's Pokemon will outspeed me, and as I suspected, it is Thunder Dragonite. I'm okay with how much damage that did. It's a two-shot, but it didn't one-shot. Unfortunately, that's the other downside, is that I wasn't able to attack, and it's going to be able to knock me out, but I learned some stuff. Gonna need a Paralysis Cure Berry, level up a little bit more. This almost seems doable. Now, in the interest of time, I haven't shown off the other Elite Four battles in a while, but I did want to show off this battle against Karen. The very next battle against Karen, Umbreon trolls me with Confuse Ray. I hit myself in confusion, but that's not important. Once I knock it out, I do one-shot Gengar with Wing Attack. And now I think you can see that even if I don't one-shot Houndoom, which I do, but with a crit, it won't really matter. We're obviously going to one-shot the Vileplume that comes right after. And so I should be able to make it to Lance every single time from now on. The question is... What am I going to be able to do against Lance? While it would be nice to one-shot Gyarados, I doubt that's going to happen at just level 78. Again, we come very close, but it is still able to set up Rain Dance before we knock it out. Now, I could try for Confuse Race Strats, but I'm just going to go for Return. Thunder Wave, I do have the Paralysis Cure Berry. I forgot to equip the Paralysis Cure Berry! This is why I hate when I stream challenges. I'm always distracted. And I forgot to do that. This is a waste of an attempt. 
I mean, I guess not. We've made it past Dragonite and more experience points, but... Uh. Now, since this Dragonite's level 47, I know it's the Blizzard Dragonite. And in case you weren't sure, there it is. It hits. I still survive. That's really good. Unlike in Generation 3, the Pokemon of equal level are identical, so it does just a little bit more because of a range. The rain stops, not that it really mattered anymore, and Blizzard does miss, so I'm able to knock out the Dragonite and gain a little more experience. But that's probably all I'm going to be able to do. Whatever gets sent out next, Aerodactyl, is just going to attack me. I guess Rock Slide could have missed, but whatever. Next time, don't forget the Paralysis Cure Berry. Unsurprisingly, my very next attempt, I make it right back to Lance. I have equipped the Paralysis Cure Berry, and I'm at level 80. I use Return... And we come very close to knocking out Gyarados. It actually doesn't really matter because this Dragonite's just going to use Thunder Wave. Case in point, I go for Return and whoa, that's game changing. It misses with Thunder Wave. If the next Dragonite has the same AI decision making, that means we make it to Aerodactyl at full HP. Come on, I want to see Thunder Wave. I'm just going to use Wing Attack. It doesn't matter. Yes. I don't care if it hits or misses, nothing else uses Thunder Wave. Wow, okay, even if we lose, we're gonna gain some knowledge about this fight. That is super worthwhile. Aerodactyl resists my two attacking moves, so I'm gonna go for Confuse Ray. It does not hit itself in Confusion, but Rock Slide is only doing about 80 damage, so it'll be a 3 a KO unless it crits. I go for Return and wow, it does half. It's gonna be a 2 a KO, I didn't even need to use Confuse Ray. All right, Aerodactyl, hit yourself in confusion. No, yes, it missed. Okay, we've made it past Aerodactyl. Next comes out Charizard. I actually might be able to one-shot this with return. Please. Yeah, no, <laughs> so close. It uses flamethrower, so I'm gonna need a critical hit to beat the next Dragonite. But this was amazing progress. All right, we get a critical hit, we win. Otherwise, we have to try again. Come on, critical hit! Come on, critical hit! No. Outrage, it's gonna knock me out. So, so close, but honestly, that was more encouraging than discouraging. We didn't need a ton of luck to get that result. I think this is gonna happen fairly soon. And you know what? It has been a really long time since I showed how the other battles are going. I'm level 80 now. Let's show off what the rest of the Elite Four looks like and why it's so easy to get to Lance consistently. As you'd expect, against Will, the Zatu is easily going to be one-shot by return. Jinx was one-shot before I leveled up at all, so it's clearly going to be a one-shot again. Next comes out the Slowbro, and while it isn't a one-shot, it goes for Curse or Amnesia for some reason. So we're able to knock it out. Zatu is a one ko as well, and as you saw way back when, Executor will be one-shot with Wing Attack. We're actually now at level 81, that might help us versus Lance. And honestly, I think I might level up again before I have to face him. You can see I don't expect to win in this attempt, that's why I'm not saving between Elite Four members. This is an impossible challenge. I do save because why the heck not? Unless you want to preserve your ethers and elixirs, then it's not a good idea to do that. Anyway, a while ago Koga was kind of trolly, he's not anymore. Ariados is still going to be one shot with wing attack. Venomoth obviously is going to be one shot with wing attack, that's the same you guys have already seen. Fortress now is half HP with wing attack. We were talking about that, so it never uses explosion. Surprisingly, as bulky as Muck is, it is a one-shot with return, and we're fast enough to outspeed Crobat, and so it can't use double team. Easy victory against Koga. But what about Bruno and his Onyx? How has that gotten more consistent? Once I finally figure out walking and actually talk to Bruno, I'll be able to show you. Just after I use Wing Attack and 1 KO the Hitmontop, I no longer have to rely on Confuse Ray. I just go for Return. It always goes for Sandstorm. Return is a 3 KO, but even with Sandstorm and a Rock Slide, I have more than enough HP to knock out the rest of Bruno's Pokemon. My HP still does get kind of low due to Sandstorm, but because every Pokemon is an outspeed and a guaranteed 1 KO, I don't really come all that close to losing. And this is how I was able to make it back to Karen again and again and again. We've already talked about Karen, so I'm not going to narrate her battle. The only thing I really don't want to see is Sand Attack from Umbreon. Confuse Ray is fine because either I hit myself in Confusion a bunch of time against Umbreon, which doesn't happen here. I do hit myself in Confusion versus Gengar and it uses Curse, 
but since I one-shot everything, this won't matter, and eventually I will snap out of confusion. Speaking of which, and at this point, the battle is done. We one-shot the rest of Karen's Pokemon, and the only thing standing in our way from becoming champion, at least of the Johto region, is Lance. Now, admittedly, I got lucky last time that one of the Thunder Waves missed. If that doesn't happen, I'll be paralyzed for the rest of Lance's Pokemon, and it would make the battle far more difficult. So, I do think there will be some RNG involved. But hey, I'm a Zubat, and if somehow we can win, I actually can say I beat the Elite Four without saving, which would be ridiculous. Alright, well, it's possible Return could one-shot Gyarados. Like I said, it doesn't matter. We don't one-shot. But Rain Dance is irrelevant at this point in the game. We knock out Gyarados, one down. Now, a crit or Thunder Wave miss would be clutch. We don't get the crit. We don't get the Thunder Wave miss. All right, what can you do? One Dragonite down. We really need a crit or a miss here. We go for return. No crit, but we get the miss. Excellent. Three down, only half of Lance's team remaining. We know Aerodactyl is a two hit KO. I'm just gonna go for return. It goes for Rock Slide. Thankfully, no critical hit. We are at 140 HP for the final two Pokemon. We nearly one-shot Charizard last time. Come on, please, please, yes! I think we just won. I think we actually just won. Please, just no crit against us. I don't need a crit. I'm not going to be greedy. Just no crit against us. I use return. No crit for me. Outrage. <laughs> I got a crit and I still won! I got the worst luck and I still won! That's outstanding. I... <laughs> Thank goodness Outrage is a special move in Generation 2. In fact, it is still Generation 4. <laughs> what a perfect end to this Elite Four run. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. I'd be fine with ending the video here, but you know I'm not gonna do that. The real end in Gold and Silver is Red. Unlike Steven and Emerald, there are credits that roll after you defeat Red, and if there are credits that roll after a new trainer, to me that is true ending. At our level, the Kanto Gyms should be a joke, but if we've learned anything from the Spinarak run, should be a joke and are a joke are very different things, so let's hope there aren't any unexpected challenges. Now, sometimes I do the Kanto gyms in order, but I was curious if I could beat Lieutenant Surge, since he will be the toughest gym leader, I think. And you do start off in Vermilion City, so he is just right there. He leads with Raichu. We one-shot with Return, one down. Magneton is what I'm worried about. We don't one-shot, but it goes for double team. And even Wing Attack will knock it out, so yeah, Surge is gonna be a joke. I have a good feeling the rest of Kanto will be pretty easy. Maybe Brock can be difficult. We will have Steel Wing by that point. But yeah, we beat Lieutenant Surge easily. Next gym leader. I always seem to forget about her in red and blue, so let's just go battle Erica right now. We're just going to use Wing Attack a bunch of times, and we're going to win. Tangela, Wing Attack, Jump Luff, Wing Attack. This may stun you, but Blossom, Wing Attack. And against Victory Bell, we use... You guys were supposed to say Wing Attack. Which, by the way, if you did, you're a real one, and I appreciate that. Next up, we have Janine. It's the same strategy, but with Return instead of Wing Attack. Crobat, easy one-shot. I mean, I don't even know why I'm narrating these battles. There's really not much I'm doing. You can see I'm actually zoning out, talking to chat, not paying attention. I mean, you can't see me because we cropped it out, but that's what I'm doing at this point. Listen, I do love Gold and Silver. But it's kind of ridiculous that potentially the 15th gym leader could have a Pokemon level 33. I mean, that's actually a lower level than any of Koga's Pokemon in Generation 1 when he was the 5th gym leader. Just a really weird decision. I decide to battle Sabrina next. She would be difficult if I were slower, but because I'm at such a high level, I outspeed all her powerful psychic Pokemon. And truth be told, even if they did outspeed, I would be able to survive probably one, maybe two psychics, depending on the Pokemon. I'm just that overleveled. All right, the fifth gym leader I'm going to battle is Misty. She has four Pokemon. We're just going to go for return. I actually only have four power points, but none of her Pokemon should survive. Maybe Lapras will. It's kind of bulky. It does. And it uses Blizzard. If it froze, I actually could have lost, so that's kind of neat. But unfortunately for Misty and the Kanto Gym Leaders, as of now, the RNG powers that be don't seem to be on their side. There are still three Gym Leaders left, including Brock, so 
maybe that will change. And speaking of Brock, he's the gym leader I battle next. I could use Steel Wing, but I think Return will be good enough. It doesn't one-shot Graveler, it uses Rock Slide, which does decent damage, but I still think I might win here. Next comes out Onyx. I'm gonna go for Return. It's still doing half, and Rock Slide actually misses, so I should definitely win. Rhyhorn, once again, half, once again, missed, and once again, we knock it out. Omastar's defense isn't great. We go for Return. It uses Surf. It does decent damage. We knock it out. The final Pokemon is Kabutops. We go for Return. Does more than half. Surf does like nothing, and as I suspected, I didn't even need to teach Steel Wing. Brock was still a complete pushover. Only two gym leaders left, and at least one of them has a rock Pokemon. Blaine leads with Macargo. I go for return. It goes for curse, so it's going to be a 3 KO. It goes for rock slide. With curse, it does decent damage, but not enough. Next, sends out Magmar. One shot by return. And Rapidash, while fast against a normal Zubat, against a level 87 Zubat, I outspeed in one shot. Typically, though, if there's one gym leader that will cause me problems, it's Blue. He's actually pretty decent, and hopefully I get a first try victory. He leads with a level 56 Pidgeot. I go for return, and we don't one-shot. Wing attack doesn't do that much damage. I'll actually switch to wing attack to knock it out. One down. Next comes out Alakazam. Thankfully, because we outlevel it by over 30, we outspeed and obviously are going to one-shot with return. Rhydon might be kind of scary, though. I'm going to use Confuse Ray. It goes for Fury Attack. It's a five-turn Fury Attack. And now I'm going to use Return, and yeah, that did what? A fourth? A fifth? That's not good. It does hit itself in Confusion, which is going to help. I go for Return again, so I guess I'm doing closer to a quarter, but it snaps out of Confusion. It now uses Sandstorm, which is really bad for me. I go for Return, so this will be a four-hit KO. It uses Rock Slide and wow, wow! Okay, crit, but I lose. All right, Blue's not a joke. I actually have to play seriously. That's fine. I can teach Steel Wing, so this should be fine. We know Pidgeot's not going to be a one to KO. I use Steel Wing because it can boost my defense, but I don't get it. We knock out Pidgeot. I'm not going to mess around versus Alakazam. Steel Wing can miss, so we're just going to knock it out with Return. But now out comes Rhydon, we're gonna use Steel Wing, we hit, we do over half, it uses Sandstorm, and I'm so scared of Sandstorm, I reset. No, I'm kidding, I just wanted to see if something else would do more damage. You'll see what I'm talking about in just a second, but once again, Pidgeot, we're not gonna one-shot with Return. It mirror moves Return and gets a crit, but I don't think it has a high friendship value, so it does like nothing. We knock it out easily. Alakazam, yeah, we're gonna knock it out with Return, but... I want full HP back, so I'm going to use Giga Drain, and that's what I wanted to see. One shot with Giga Drain. Gyarados is going to be a 2 a KO, but not a problem. Next comes out Arcanine, which, because of the rain, can't use fire moves. It keeps going for extreme speed anyway, and I'm now at level 88 for Executor. I can use Wing Attack. We're going to one shot, and turns out Giga Drain was a better move than Steel Wing. Which is kind of unfortunate, because I wished I had Steel Wing the whole run, but by the time I finally get it, we've already beaten Erika and have Giga Drain, which is far better for our purposes. But the time for joking around is over. We are now going to battle Red. One of the toughest trainers in the entire franchise. Red was so tough in HeartGold SoulSilver, we had our first run since Magikarp that I did not complete. Zubat is not a very good Pokemon. Red has some really, really strong Pokemon very close to my level. There is a real chance this run could also end here, but there's only one way to find out. Let's battle Red. Now, the first thing I need to know is whether his level 81 Pikachu outsped my Zubat. It doesn't have any stat experience points, and it still outspeeds hits with thunder, and knocks me out. So that's bad. I do still have some rare candies, and I can level up a little bit. Eventually, we should outspeed Pikachu, and I even turned on animations to be just like the final battle in red and blue. Now at level 90, I do outspeed Pikachu. However, we're not out of the woods yet. In gold and silver, red has an Espeon, and it does outspeed me. Uses Psychic, 
and one hit KOs. Unsurprisingly, there were still a bunch of trainers in Kanto I hadn't defeated yet, some rare candies, so I do level up a little bit more. I'm not quite at level 100, but I'm pretty darn close. Just like last time, I'm gonna outspeed Pikachu, use return, and one shot. But now, do I outspeed Espeon? Yes, but do we one shot? No, we don't. As you can tell by my facial expression, I was genuinely pretty shocked. But you want to know something even more shocking? We actually survived the Psychic, and we can knock out Espeon. I don't think the run's going to last much longer. Snorlax comes out next. It's unbelievably bulky. And I'm just going to go for return, try and get a critical hit or something. And we don't even do half to Snorlax. Guys, this is not good. And that's where the video ends. Nah, I'm just kidding. I have a strategy. It's one I've used before when I am unable to get past a Pokemon easily. If we use Confuse Ray, not only will Espeon not attack me, but if it hits itself in Confusion, it will do enough damage that Return will be a one-hit KO. Which is pretty fortuitous because it almost looks as if it will survive. No! Okay, it hits itself in Confusion. Goodness, this run has everything. Now, against Snorlax, I have an idea. In Celadon City, in that building where you get Eevee in red and blue, at night, you can get the TM for Curse, which decreases speed but increases attack and defense. Snorlax seems to think increasing stats is a good idea, so it uses Amnesia, which is useless. I don't use a special move. I'm now going to go for Confuse Ray, just to be extra safe. I'm especially worried about Body Slam paralyzing me, and Snorlax does hit itself in confusion. Now that I've set up Curse, I'm going to go for Return, and that did a lot of damage. Unfortunately, Snorlax doesn't hit itself in confusion, uses Body Slam, and no! I was worried about that. As slow as Snorlax is, after being paralyzed, it will outspeed me, but it hits itself in confusion. So long as we attack, we're going to knock out Snorlax, and that is half of Red's Pokemon. This Blastoise, though, is pretty scary because it knows Blizzard. It is going to outspeed, but it goes for Rain Dance. Interesting choice. I'm obviously going to go for Return. It's boosted by Curse, and because of that, it is doing half. But Blastoise has another chance to attack. It does hit with Blizzard. I don't think this will knock me out, but it is going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, only 30 HP remaining. We are going to knock out Blastoise, but Charizard or Venusaur could easily knock me out. Even though it is raining, Charizard will be able to use Flamethrower, and while we were very close, being paralyzed was absolutely devastating. We cannot have that. After what happened with Espeon, I decide to level up just a little bit more. Still not quite at level 100. We're two levels away. We are still going to one-shot Pikachu with Return. But the question is, can we one-shot Espeon and not have to rely on Confuse Ray? I forgot to turn animations on and it takes forever for the HP to trickle down. Unfortunately, it's stopping. But Espeon uses Reflect. Interesting. That's not actually good. Reflect lasts for five turns and halves my physical damage. So that might actually be just as bad. And we don't one-shot Espeon, so... Ah, oh, that's not good. Well, we're gonna have to stall versus Snorlax, so I'm gonna set up Confuse Ray. Unfortunately, Snorlax does not hit itself in Confusion, goes for Body Slam, but I'm not paralyzed. That's good. Just like last time, I'm gonna set up a Curse. I really need Snorlax to hit itself in Confusion? It does. That's very good. I don't want to lower my speed anymore. I'm gonna go for Return, but unfortunately with Reflect, it's not even doing half. Snorlax goes for Body Slam. Once again, no paralysis. Unfortunately, even with the Reflect down, unless I get a critical hit, Snorlax will have another opportunity to attack me. That won't be very good. Wait a minute. We got the crit. That's great. I don't know if we still outspeed Blastoise after a curse, but if we do... I think this is over. All right, moment of truth. Do we outspeed Blastoise? We don't. It hits with Blizzard. 
and it knocks us out. Even at level 98, we're not fast enough to outspeed with the curse. There was a 30% chance Blizzard missed. We're so, so close. Speaking of which, it's time. We're going to level all the way up to level 100. I tried my hardest, but it seems like if we're going to win, we're going to need every level we can get. So against Pikachu, we already know what's going to happen. We've seen it a million times before. This is a huge moment in the battle. We have not been able to one-shot Espeon with just return. We're not going to set up Confuse Ray. We're just going to use it. And no, we're so <laughs> close. This might be a range. Psychic's not going to one-shot, but yeah, this isn't going to work. We only can win if every Pokemon just hits itself a Confusion. We're going to set up Confuse Ray against Snorlax. And yeah, there we go. All right, guys, let's try one more time. So Pikachu, we've seen this before. We use Return, we knock it out. I think it might be a range though, please. No, but it uses Reflect. Bit of a mixed bag. We saw that didn't really work in our favor last time. All right, well, I'm going to set up Confuse Ray against Snorlax. It does hit itself in Confusion on turn one. I use Curse. Snorlax hits itself in Confusion again. I'm going to use Return. It is at half HP since it hit itself in Confusion so many times. And it's going to use Amnesia. Okay. Reflect fades at the perfect time. So we're going to be able to knock out Snorlax. And we've made it to Blastoise at full HP. Do we outspeed though? Come on. No, it goes for Rain Dance. At least it wasn't Blizzard. And we're doing over half. We really need Blizzard to miss. It doesn't. Oh my gosh. At least we're going to knock out Blastoise and make it to Charizard. And it is raining and we have more health. Hold on a minute. This might be really good. Charizard's best move are fire moves. It goes for Flamethrower, which gets reduced by the rain. Come on, let's one shot. No, we're so close. Another Flamethrower comes close to knocking me out. And it's all up to Venusaur. Venusaur is the slowest of the three Kanto starters. If we outspeed, we might win. Even though we double resist, Giga Drain should knock me out. Come on. Please outspeed. Way to use Solar Beam. We win. <laughs> Let's go. I don't know if this would be possible in Heart Gold Soul Silver. I mean, I have different moves, but man, this was not easy. Maybe I could have waited for a battle for Blizzard to miss, but. I'm going to be honest, of all the impossible challenges I've done, this was one of the most fun runs to play just because Zubat did have a lot of different options. And unlike Ditto, which is my favorite video, it wasn't a complete nightmare to beat random trainers having to rely on struggle and transform. Zubat was actually pretty fun to use. So I'll probably do more runs with Zubat, other weak Pokemon, Generation 1 Pokemon. This video's lasted forever. Thanks for watching. Take care.